Alrighty, so in today's video, I want to answer the question as to whether or not this, the Mini 3 Pro, can be used for professional work, predominantly in real estate, photo, and video. What's going on, everybody? Ken here. You're watching Original Dobo, and for the past two weeks, I have spent shooting with the Mini 3 Pro professionally for all of my real estate shoots. Working with clients, I have used this for photos, I've used this for video, I've done it all, and guess what? Not a single person complained or even asked a question. Now granted, I never let them see the drone that I was using, I just handed them the final results. So I'm gonna give you examples of photo, I'm gonna give you examples of video, also talk about what I've learned with the exposure on the Mini 3 Pro as far as video and Decinolite goes, and then I'll give you some final thoughts as to whether or not this is a good idea for using this for video and photo professionally. Um, so let's just jump into it with photo. So for all of my photos, I opted to do auto bracketed exposure. I did not do any of the 48 megapixels, although you can and I did when I first did the first initial video review, link down here somewhere. Um, and uh, I think the 48 megapixels works absolutely outstanding. I had no issues with that. However, however, um, it's not necessary. You don't need 48 megapixels for real estate photography, videography. Nobody's going to be doing that much pixel peeping. And because nobody's doing that much pixel peeping, I just use the standard auto bracketed exposures. Using three brackets, I would typically choose the two best uh, photos out of the bracket or sometimes one photo out of the bracket to be my main hero shot. And then from there, I would make my final tweaks, such as adjusting the skies or replacing the skies even to get my final image. It really all depended on what I was doing um, for the client, whether or not I was going to replace the sky or leave the sky. Now, some things I did notice with some of these photos as we're looking through them is there is a little bit of chromatic aberration and some purple fringing if you look really close. But again, with real estate photos, nobody is doing any sort of pixel peeping. Us as photographers, us as hobbyists, we're gonna be a lot more critical than a potential home buyer or even a real estate agent. They're not going to be zooming all the way in at 200% saying, well, wait a second, <laughs> I'm not buying this house, there's some purple fringe in there. They're just not doing that, so it's not something that you have to worry about. But overall, I think these images grade it really nicely and they looked really appealing and pleasing. The other thing that I really love about this is because this is so small, I can get it into spots that I normally couldn't get my other drones. And this also meant that I didn't have to walk all the way around houses with a tripod. I can just fly from the front yard, go into the backyard, snap corner to corner angles, bam, perfect and then come around to the front and capture my angles easily. The other nice thing about this is, is if you did not invest in a tilt shift lens, this can definitely help you in those scenarios where you have a larger building where you're trying to get to the top and the bottom and you wanna make sure your verticals are perfect. This can definitely allow you to do that really quite easily. So really, really happy with the photos off of this. And again, I don't think anybody's gonna complain um, overall. Pretty solid work from this. All right, let's talk about video. Okay, so video, a little bit more of a tricky conversation because video, there's a lot of things you can't fake. Like you can't really replace the skies in video easily. I mean, you can with After Effects, but it's gonna cause you a lot more work than you were probably looking for. So for the video, I did uh, two different settings. I shot in the standard profile and I shot in Decinolike. Overall, I think both the Cinelike and the standard profile look pretty good. I did notice some slight variations with the Cinelike and the standard profile as far as the green grass goes. The green grass on the standard profile was much more of a evergreen, and I don't think that was like totally true to life. I think the grass in the D Cinelike was a little bit truer to what I was seeing actually being there because the sun was facing behind us, blaring down on that tree, and it was just a little bit more yellow. The other thing to keep in mind is that it was a gray day and behind the house, the sky was completely blown out. The sky was sort of coming and going, so it was really hard to get much detail out of the sky. Overall, I think that dynamic range from the house did look pretty good. I do prefer the Decinolike look more than I uh, do prefer the standard profile. However, with that said, if you plan on filming and you're not going to control your exposure manually, be sure that you do not overexpose the Cinelike more than one stop over. Anything more than one stop over, you start getting into the territory of it's hard to recover the highlights. 
um, and you could end up with an image that is clipping and just doesn't look quite as good. The image starts breaking down a little bit quicker, so a little bit quicker than it does on the Mavic 3, unfortunately. The Mavic 3 was always hard with overexposure as well, but the Mini 3, anything over one stop in decent like it starts breaking down, so be mindful of that. Um, just know that one stop over or a half stop over is going to be your sweet spot for decent alike. In the standard profile, I didn't do any overexposing. I just, anything I did as far as the exposure, I did in post and I think it looked good. Um, I just adjust the saturation, adjust the greens to be a little bit more true to life and uh, let it go. What's really nice about the Mini 3 camera is if you are a Sony shooter, you can really match the color science almost, almost exact, almost one for one, I found that it worked pretty well. I haven't done any Instagram reels with clients yet. Again, I just got this drone not too long ago and I'm trying to get clients to get on board with that vertical video, get on board with the Instagram reels. So hopefully I'll have some reels edits for you pretty soon where you can see what it will look like using the vertical video and real estate. Uh, but overall, I think you know videos look fine as long as you mind your exposure, you can get some great results. All right, let me give you my wrap up thoughts on this. Okay, so wrap up thoughts. I think the Mini 3 Pro is a great additional option if you are somebody who already has a drone, needs a good backup drone, this is a great solution. It's also a great solution for somebody who doesn't wanna spend a tremendous amount of money on something, let's say like the Mavic 3 or even uh, an Evo for that matter. Then it's a great option. But also be mindful of the fact that you still have the Air 2S, which is an amazing option still in 2022 it is still a great option for a camera and it's roughly about the same price. But are you getting the same performance out of the Air 2S for less? And the answer is yes, you are, with the exception of the fact that you aren't getting that vertical video. They are essentially pretty similar in a lot of ways. So you don't necessarily have to have the newest, but I do like the convenience of the vertical video. So I would probably still opt for the Mini 3. And plus two, it's just so quiet and not having to have conversations with people about why I'm flying a drone in a subdivision has been really wonderful. So I'll probably continue using this more than the, the Mavic 3 just because it's a lot quieter. But if I really have like a super professional gig that I really need that extra dynamic range and the benefits of D-Log, then I'll use my Mavic 3. But for everything else, I think the decent alike is perfectly fine. So hey, listen, if you want to learn about real estate photography, you wanna see all of our edit in secrets, you wanna see how we go through a full shoot from soup to nuts, head over to the link in the description below for Pilot Institute. That is where our brand new courses, both Billy and myself and two other professionals have put together over nine hours of continuous content and we're always adding to that content as well. It's the most complete and intuitive course when it comes to real estate videography and photography. It's where we are sharing our secrets that we have learned over the past three years of making a living off this uh, full time. So if you're wanting to do this and you wanna learn more, it's more than I could ever provide on YouTube. It is a paid course and I believe the course is $2.99 which we try to price it as cheap as possible. Again, we had to pay the people who edit it and the people producing it. So click the link below, check out that course if you are interested in going full time in real estate videography and photography. All right, that's gonna do it for this video. If you found any value or anything useful out of it, let me know. Comment down below what you learned or didn't learn or what you liked or didn't like and I will see you in the next video and as always, stay original.